If you ever wondered what happens with music therapy in the military and veteran populations, this video we're going to talk about a book that Rebecca Faudre edited to discuss those topics. So stay tuned. We're going to interview her to discuss what's in that book. And hi, I'm JD. I'm a music therapist and a statistician here to offer statistically significant support. And if you don't mind hitting those like and subscribe buttons so that you can get the support as it comes out. Hey, Rebecca, it's awesome to see you here. Thanks for coming. No, oh, thank you so much, JD. I am so happy to be here to discuss this upcoming book. Um, and I just want to say in advance that what we discussed today and my thoughts that I express are solely that of myself and represent myself only. So let's get a bit about your background. Um, so you're a board certified music therapist, right? That is correct. Yes, I went to Berkeley College of Music and studied music therapy there in Boston. I earned my board certification in 2009 after interning at Music Works Inc. in California. Um, actually, is where I got and introduced to working with military populations out there in San Diego. Um, and yeah, I've been working ever since as a board certified music therapist. I took a small hiatus in 2013 to earn a master's. Um, in education with specificity on educational neuroscience to kind of tie in what I had been experiencing with military populations, namely with traumatic brain injury and post-traumatic stress. Um, and I'm currently uh, working towards my master's in social work. Awesome. Uh, so you got asked to, to write, edit the book for music therapy in the military and veteran populations. Uh, how how did that come about? Like, why why should why write the book? Um, so it actually came about um, through some of the different articles that I've been publishing um, about military populations and music therapy. And so, uh, one of the articles that had been published to Oxford University Press um, had gotten into the hands of someone from Jessica Kingsley Publishing, um, and I had been. Um, myself and a few of those authors on the, on the article had been asked to conceptualize, not even like, hey, can you edit a book? Just like, hey, looking at these articles, um, we're wondering if there's more to this. And they had done their homework to realize that there hadn't been any text put out as far as like a resource for music therapy in military populations. So it actually just started as a, hey, um, what do you think about a book project of this, um, you know, to this topic? And I ended up, um, drawing the short straw, if you will, <laughs> and taking on um, the project. So it really started from just conversations about the need for it and then developing, um, you know, the content. So really conceptualizing all of the chapters, the different sections, what had to go in there, and then putting together the author team, which we have 29 contributing authors um, in this book. And I think to me, that's what makes it really, really special. There's so many um, experts who have just different areas of experience that contributed to this. So you said it's a it's a resource for people to have so that they, they can understand music therapy and how it works and what it's being happened what's happening with the military connected populations. Um, but but if I'm so I'm a music therapist, what will I get out of reading the book? So as a music therapist, I think you already have the lens of like you know, half of the book, which I have a copy here too. Thanks for showing it, um, which is the first two letters, music therapy. And then what you learn about that is how is that um, applied to military and veteran populations? So when we were saying um, this, we're thinking of active duty military as well as their families um, and caregiver support and veteran populations. So people who, um, who have retired from service or who are no longer in service, um, but still have that you know, connection. Um, and what we say now is just the military connectedness. Um, so we're really looking at learning how music therapy is kind of used with military connected populations on this huge spectrum. Um, and also learning more about the foundations of you know, the current of what's happening, but also the foundations and historic context and perspective of music, generally speaking, before even music therapy in the military and how it's been really interwoven into the fabric of military culture, all the way from battle calls to ceremonies, um, to balls, um, and now to treatment. Mm -hmm. So, but not just music therapists, therapists, but also um, it's military connected. So it's, it's the service members and the veterans, but also their caregivers are talked about in this book too. So what, what could they get out of reading this book? 
Sure. Um, and I think just generally any reader, any, any audience member, anyone who picks up this book and decides to even open to a chapter of interest um, is going to find a lot of overarching and overlapping information about um, how music is used in both the VA and military healthcare systems um, and how music really ties into us as, as humans, right? Our human response to music and how that really is a beautiful um, bridge or pipeline into being able to use it in very innovative ways for interdisciplinary treatment. And so if you're an interdisciplinary care provider um, who has a music therapist or you know a creative arts therapist generally on your team, um, learning how to co-treat with the arts, with the creative arts therapies um, to really enhance um, the treatment process and rehabilitation of your patients and your clients. Um, if you're someone who served in the military or military leadership or a decision maker, really learning about um, how music therapy is used and not just how it's used, but where it's come from, how much it's grown and the potential um, for continuation um, to be used in that therapeutic way. So you mentioned co-treatment and that's that's a big theme throughout the book is um, co-treatment with other creative art therapists, but also co-treatment with other non-creative art therapists because um, it sounds like they're really in an interdisciplinary and a holistic model of care. Um, so why why sh why is it important to treat within that interdisciplinary model? What are the benefits of it? Sure. So even just thinking of you know holistic models, interdisciplinary models, that is really bringing people who have specific expertise in one area, say, you know, physical therapy that treats the body, the skeleton, the muscular, you know, structure of our bodies. If you think about um, an occupational therapist, they're treating like functionality of perhaps specific parts. And then if you think about, um, you know, speech language, um, you're thinking of also just like the vocal apparatus and swallowing and, you know, many things that are just really isolated. So when we think about interdisciplinary, we're thinking about that all encompassing the patient as just a whole. So we have people who are treating um, different parts that really help make um, optimized function. Um, behavioral health is another one, you know, treating the, you know, the, the soul and, and the mind. Um, and then you use the arts as a, you know, as I see integrated into this interdisciplinary setting to really bring all of that together um, and bring, you know, meet the patients and clients um, in more of that really holistic way of who they are in many facets. We are so, you know, we're so dynamic. Um, and so looking at that multifaceted way that we can really tie into bridging all of those different treatment paths together and those goals, um, to really, you know, optimize the function and the outcomes of all of them. And the book covers, uh, it's a history of music therapy in, in the military and in a lot of parts of it. Um, and, and you alluded to this where it goes to where we came from, where we are today, and then where we're going into the future. Um, and one of the fascinating things I, I learned from reading this book is that there's this been this give and take between um, the military seeming to want music therapy and then putting it aside uh, and how that kind of continues. Um, so I, could you speak a little bit more about that? Or I'm also trying to go into the future about what um, what's what the future of music therapy in the military is? Um, oh, I wish I could answer that question. Um, I can <laughs> give my <laughs> thoughts on, I mean, my ideal of what that looks like is you know, likely going to be different from the reality, but, you know, I dream big. I've always been um, a dreamer and um, a risk taker. And I think that when we really think about where we're at and how far we've come and, and looking at the military, I mean, there's multiple systems that are represented in this book. There's a, you know, the active duty component, there's a VA, there's like you have brought to the community side, the family, like all these really important components. And I'm, I want to come back to family. Um, so let's put a pin in that. Um, but, you know, thinking about, um, you know, hearing what music therapists and the contributing authors had to say about where we've come. And the VA has, the VA is one of, I think the largest federal employers, if not the largest of 
creative arts therapists. Um, so they've been really um, ramping up their contributions to that whole holistic patient care model through engaging and supporting and employing creative arts therapists. Um, that's not necessarily meant to say that we've always been utilized in the right way, um, but that is something that's continuing to grow as awareness is being spread through things like the book and different research articles. Um, and I think we need research to um, really show um, what the impact is and why people should be investing in that. Um, and so we've seen a lot of promise, I think, and a lot of forward movement for that support. Um, there's a chapter on an initiative called Creative Forces, which I would definitely recommend people look at as well as um, the chapter on research, JD, which you co-authored, um, which uses that as a model for really how we can build on um, and creating what we need through filling those gaps of what is going to really continue um, to elevate and um, you know, have accessibility to the creative arts therapies and these huge structures of healthcare. Um, it's a huge feat. And so, um, I, I can actually read, there. there is a, a comment from a survey that we did. Um, this is from chapter 12, um, which someone had you know, asked about what are the needs for the continuation in the future of music therapy. And it's saying a need and in, an increase of evidence of creative arts therapies treatment for military connected populations integrated into interdisciplinary care models, including larger scale studies that demonstrate outcomes and define dosage um, as something to serve to increase and establish continued services amongst DOD and VA healthcare systems. That's page 257. So, you know, that is from um, the actual sources of the people who are. Um, who are authors and who contributed to um, the survey for that chapter of the future and what what do we think needs to be seen. So that's what you're going to get from this book is, um, especially in those later chapters, where are we going um, and where do, where do we aim to go and how do we get there, you know? So it's, I know that didn't answer the question, but I think, again, this is just another stepping stone mm -hmm. in that journey. Mm -hmm. So, um, and the book covers a lot of, of standardization. So it's, to me, it sounds like it, that's helping with the research and to figure out, to, to be able to tell the story about what's happening. Yeah, you know, thinking of standardized practice in, let's take music therapy as a profession, as a field, as a discipline. Um, we have um, guided imagery through music. We have neurologic music therapy. We have NICU music therapy. We have music therapy assisted childbirth. We have these different trainings and certifications that you can go through um, to gain this awareness of standardized practice, you know, um, formulaic, like how you actually, you know, X plus Y in music equals a amazing outcome of, mm -hmm. of rehabilitation um, that has been standardized and replicated over time and such has gained validity and, you know, being used for specific populations, traumatic brain injury, relaxation, um, childbirthing, you know, um, NICU, neonatal populations and vital sign stabilization. So really, if you look at that, we don't have one of those for military music therapy. Um, and just understanding, um, I, don't, I don't know if that would be able to happen, but I think the standardization, the, the examples that are given in the book by clinicians who are boots on the ground working um, with this population, both in the VA and, in, and on the active duty side, um, really this is, it's tried and true. These, you know, the authors have such a rich wealth of information and knowledge about working um, with their patients and working with the, you know, military and veteran populations um, and their families that um, you're really getting the information from the source and um, the examples that they give um, are just beautiful depictions of the amazing work that they do. And so um, hopefully this can help toward, you know, creating maybe conceptualizations around standardization or even like a starting point of what that might look like. But I wouldn't, I think I'd be over selling the book or just overstating if I said that this was something that was um, a tool for standardization. Right now, I want, like I intended this book and I think it came out in the way that people can read the work that's being done and really understand the impact that music has and you know what the patients and their families and other you know people in on the interdisciplinary team are gaining from having music therapists at their at their sites. 
Mm -hmm. And there's a quote, that's, that's a good point. And the, there's a quote says, I only asserted that if the healthier soldier wanted and needed music to keep up his spirits, how much more did the wounded man need to keep up his morale? And it just shows how how needed music and music therapy is in this population, that, at least to me. So yeah, so we had put a pin in the conversation about talking about the caregivers and the family members and how music therapy can help them. Uh, and I wanted to come back to that. So uh, please, what, what are your thoughts about music therapy and the, the family system? Yeah, I just, you know, I've been thinking about that, about the different chapters and how it's such a wide range of representation of who the authors are. Um, and that really, you'll see that, you know, through the book and who's actually authoring the the chapters on specific topics. The family chapter to me is so powerful because just as music therapists are authoring chapters about um, their experiences with their patient populations and service members are writing about the history of music um, in the military, um, families are, the two family members have written the chapter on family and caregivers and their family members who are primary caregivers um, as well. And so to me, that um, is just a, such a special chapter because it really taps into what they see their, you know, their, their service member and veteran like experiencing, but also the impact that, you know, this kind of treatment has on the whole family system. Um, and so I think that is just really another special way as you were asking about interdisciplinary care. And we see that like really holistic impact on the patient when they're treated in such a team oriented dynamic um, that we really see that with the families in that family system as well. And so um, I just wanted to touch upon that, that chapter it really exemplifies that. Because mm -hmm. what you do affects not only the patient, but the other people, but sometimes I know I've had uh, family members just come into sessions and, and they get into that treatment as well. So, um, so it end up, ends up being a, a dynamic approach. So that's. Yeah. And there has been, there was actually just another um, article published about um, working across the creative arts therapies with families. So um, there is um there's some great work happening with that as well with military families and creative arts therapies and more to come. That's amazing. This is a fascinating book. So, and I, I, I know you've put so much time and blood into this. <laughs> so when does it come out? <laughs> uh, so this is out on Thursday, 10, 21, 21, um, October 21st. So that's just in a couple of days. I don't know when this is going to air, but, um, yeah, uh, very excited about this accomplishment and really an accomplishment from every single, um, patient that any of the authors and myself as editor has ever worked with an accomplishment for um, all the authors who contributed an accomplishment for um, family members, for amazing military leaders, for, you know, everyone who ha has been really um, invested in this process and invested in um, helping the creative arts therapies um, get a foothold and establish themselves in this in these different systems to support military connected individuals and communities um, there's no shortage of you know gratitude <laughs> that I can outpour onto everyone who's contributed to this actually being now a physical structured resource once again a uh it's an amazing book and I, I, I want people to read it because I really want them to understand how valuable music therapy can be for the military and veteran populations. So, um, so would you, would you want to come back to do another interview? I would love to. And I, you know, as you're encouraging people to read it, I can't wait for people to read it and start like giving feedback and like what they liked, you know, what more they want to see and maybe a second edition. Um, I'm already kind of dreaming about like what the next step is. And so, um, yeah, I'd love to come back and discuss maybe after I, you know, we get some of that feedback um, and just to maybe dig into some sections of the book that um, warrant some further discussion. Awesome. And if, for anyone listening to this video today, if you want to put feedback into the comment section below, I will compile that and send it to Rebecca and we can come back and discuss those for you. So, but that's the end of the, end of the interview today. Uh, if you found this video helpful, please hit that like button. And if you want more content like this, hit that subscribe button so that you can get the support as it comes out. Thank you.